Hello, my lovely friends, and welcome back. Today we're going to be sharing interior ideas for Japanese castles in Minecraft. I'll give some specific to the castle tutorial that I shared a bit back, but also how you can apply these ideas to larger castles or different fits. I'll also give a bit of information on the cherry blossom trees that I showed in the last video, and some ideas for smaller Japanese house designs. I'm sorry for the long hiatus between videos, life has been very busy, but to all of you that have subscribed, we just hit 2,000, thank you so, so much. We're going to be back on a regular upload schedule with uploads about every week, so be very excited for that. I'm so, so happy for what the future has in store. Let's drop the shaders and get right into the video. Alright, so we're going to start with the specific interior for the Japanese castle that I shared with you in the last episode. So as we come in here, the first floor is going to be very open, for my idea, more of an atrium kind of lobby area. And so what you'll notice about this is on the outside, this first floor actually slopes inwards, and here we want the walls to be straight, so you'll actually see there's some open room as I build this up. And you can use this extra space for storage or chests or however you like to use it if you're playing on this in survival. And you should note that when I like to show interior designs, I don't usually do them block for block, so I'll give you all of the step-by-step -step ideas, but not necessarily the blocks to use them. I think that interiors are the best place to be just a bit unique for yourself. So these are some ideas that you can use for this specific Japanese castle. And so I have these two kind of pond areas on this closer side with some courts on the outside. And I do like putting these little waterfalls in the corners coming down into them. I also like using just a lot of nature, a lot of plants in these designs. So you will see a lot of these vines. The issue with vines is they'll spread out, and for vines to look best, you want them to be sparse through your building. So what you will notice is that there's a lot of string around here. And these kind can get kind of annoying aesthetically, so I would recommend downloading one of the resource packs that makes strings invisible. I'll link one of those in the description. I'm not using one just for the sake of keeping this video vanilla. And so over in these corners we're going to have these little garden areas. I like putting these little trees. They have these little fences coming up and then just a few leaves around them. Then I have some bamboo, some ferns, some grass. Then for the soil it's a mix of regular dirt, coarse dirt, and then podzol. And you'll notice these carpets are actually hiding sea lanterns to light things up through here. And then the most important, probably hardest part of this is the floor that leads to the second balcony level. And so this floor is made with smooth sandstone. You can copy how many blocks up it is if you just look at the ratio from these bricks to regular stone, but I don't think it's necessary to keep exactly what I've done. And when you build this, you're going to build out one layer of smooth sandstone slabs. These are top slabs that so you can build things on top on the floor above. And they're going to come out three blocks. Then ringed all the way on the inside, I have another layer down of sandstone slabs. And then what I do is starting on the center, because we did put a center to this build, I just put down another sandstone block, then move two down, put down another, like so all through here, and then build out that one extra all the way along to kind of build this arched look as it pushes out. And so that mostly makes this base level. I really like how it looks in terms of keeping it more natural. For the stairs here, there's some extra lighting hidden there. And then these are just more smooth sandstone slabs. I like the look of this. It's less easy to get up, but it looks just a lot better than regular staircases. And I have some iron bars split up so they don't connect to each other to get up. And so that gives most of this first floor not too hard to build, and it is just aesthetically pleasing. Not much help in survival, but you could add in some extra survival stuff if you so chose. This build in general, this interior, is meant to blend survival utility with actual creative aesthetics. And so if you're in creative, you can get rid of some of the crafting tables and such on the upper floors. And if you're in survival, you can add in some extra storage and such and utility. Like this floor, you could put some chests along here, that kind of stuff, crafting tables just to make it more useful. On the second floor, it's pretty simple because this is just a balcony area. These are just jungle trapdoors to kind of make a scaffolding moving along. And I like to put these little leaf blocks every once in a while and then an extra piece of trapdoor there. And you can see these trapdoors go out, these ones go in. It just kind of varies it. It looks nice, it's a bit messy, but I just like to keep my interiors a bit more messy. The ceiling on this floor also looks complicated, but is not that complicated. We just have a layer of stairs and then it comes up a layer of slabs, and then 
excuse me, that's another stair. We just have two layers of stairs moving up like this. And then along the second layer of stairs, every other block is going to go stair, full block, stair, full block. And then above these full blocks, there'll be a slab. And then just this top layer is just some dark oak to contrast the spruce down here. So again, two stairs. Then on the second stair level, it's alternating full block and then slab. And the reason why we have two stairs built like this is as you'll see, just from the way that we built it, you will have two white concrete blocks that kind of stair step up like this. In terms of the stair up to the next level, I went with a spiral staircase just because that's all I could fit in. If you're looking at like building a sideways stair up to the next floor, that's kind of difficult because if you break this block, that leads to the outside and you don't really want that. So the easiest way that I found was building the spiral staircase. You will have to build out the balcony one block further centered, but the spiral staircase is pretty easy to build just with slabs coming up like so and some wood in the middle and you'll have to aim it just right so that you don't hit your head but if you tinker around with it a bit it should work out again you'll see a bit of messiness this is from the outside but i end up actually liking how that looks in these interiors so as we move up we have the next floor again this floor is not incredibly useful you could add in a lot more to make it more useful but i just like the way it looks so we'll step through this over here there's a bit of extra room, add in some extra vines and stuff. Again, you'll see how these strings can be kind of annoying. But then we have some sea lanterns, more trapdoors there just to keep them better, and then just more plants. I just really enjoy keeping leaves in my builds and vines just to make them look better. And then coming over here, we have these really cool designs in the wall. All this is is a full block, then a slab and a full block. So then full block, slab, full block on both sides. And then just these slabs coming across the top of it. And then it's just mirrored upside down on the top. So this full block, slab, full block, slabs across. And it makes this very cool looking design. You can put some flower pots through here and you can inlay it into the wall. For this room, we're using cyan terracotta for the walls and some brown concrete powder through here. Then on this side, that's just mirrored on the other side. On this side, just a nice little chair right here. And then a little plant and lay into the wall. So this is pushed back, then we have some light blue concrete, then just some plants, just however you like in there. Again, more vines. Ideally, you <laughs> not have to put these strings, but you do need them there to stop the vines from growing over everything. And overall, this is just a nice looking room. You can put a crafting table, you can put a broom stand, whatever you like there. And then the stairs. The hardest part about building these castles definitely will be the staircases, because they kind of can be hard to fit in. For this one, I just put it up against the wall like this, a pretty simple design. Strings are kind of in your face. If you can't get that, then just get rid of the vines and the places where the strings will get in your face. But leaves like this are still really easy to put in and will look nice. And most of the lighting here is with lanterns. Normally when you have carpets, it's nice to put more lanterns underneath. Right here I was not able to because that just goes straight down all the way to the base. So moving up to the next floor, we just have a simple staircase that wraps around to fit up. And then down here I just had an extra space, so I added in another plant and a leaf just to look nice. We get a bit of a view here, which will look nice. On this level I wanted to put a little kitchen area, so you can get a better view if you fly up a bit, because this is a pretty cramped room. We just have our light blue terracotta here with some gray concrete powder around the base. And we have this little cooking area. These are just campfires and then some fences down here. Then I really like how this comes together. If you're really, really old, you'll remember a design similar to this in my um, Tiki Hut video, but Tiki Bar video. But in here we have some scaffolding and some barrels. You can store your foods in here. Then just a smelter, or whatever you call these, smoker. And then two furnaces, which look nice. For my cooking areas, I think adding in this stone is kind of nice, because if you're actually using this in the real world, there would be a bit of stone there. You wouldn't want to have something softer, at least in my experience. And then for the ceiling here, a nice little trick to use is just putting across some scaffolding with these full logs, which looks nice. And then for the stairs, we kind of use the same trick here where they just come up and then wrap around the best you can fit them in. For this top floor, we have our bedroom. And so this is pretty simple because we really do not have much room at this point because 
our castle tapers off as we build up. But we were able to fit in a nice screen. Whenever I'm building Japanese builds, I like to use these at some point just because they look nice, especially with the birch trapdoors as they come up like this. You can fit in one bed, if two beds, if it's just one person, you could put some chests or something. Nice little table, putting down the upside down stairs as these kind of shelf areas. And then over here, just a bookshelf. No real utility, but I think it looks nice. And if you wish to spice things up, there is some room on the very top where there's not really any space for an actual room, but you could do an enchanting room if you could fit it, or some chests like this if you wish at the very top. Just to move stuff in, again, you can't really fit anything up here, and if you're just building for aesthetics and creative, you probably won't want to do that just because it doesn't look too nice in terms of putting this in, but if you're in survival, it could be nice. Overall, I like the feel of this top room because you actually get a view out. If you want to build some, I think you can see the trees from somewhere, yeah, some trees like I have, you can get a bit of a view from there. But it should look nice overall and give you a place to sleep if you're trying to use this as one of your survival houses. I'm assuming if you're building this in survival, you're at the point where you probably have another starter house or some other places where you can put some more of the utility like the enchanting tables and more bulk storage. But you could probably fit that in if you really wanted to just because there is some extra space between the walls that you'll end up building to fill this all out. So I thought I'd quickly talk about these cherry blossom trees that I built. These were built with world edit. Building something like this from hand will take a really long time. For actual world edit tree videos, there's a lot just if you look up how to build a world edit tree. But I'll run through what you want to think about if you want to build something like this in survival. It will take a while, but I'll give you the basics for how to build in this style. I have built a couple trees like this in survival and they do take a while, but they are worth it for your survival worlds. For the base, whatever big trees I build, I always kind of like to make these more hollow bases where they come up from a couple points that are more hollow underneath. I just like the way that looks. Then you really want to curve them up. You can really tell this is world edit because I did not put as much time into making this as refined. But as you build it up, you want it to be rounded off at points and kind of get that curved look. Generally, what I recommend is building it up just one block and trying to figure out the shape that you want before you commit to fleshing out the entire trunk because that will take a while. Once you get up here, you can see I've just built out these branches. I do recommend before adding in any leaves, building out all of your branches and getting the general idea. And with this style of tree, you do want to kind of push out these sporadic branches that are pushing out in different directions. Then pick a lot of different blocks for the leaves for these cherry blossoms. You can see I have white concrete, pink concrete, pink wool, glazed pink terracotta, some pink glass, and there's even more blocks that you can include if you would like. And then don't just clump them all together, sporadically put them out. You can tell these were brushed on with world edit, but you can get the same effect just by adding blocks then breaking them in in survival, or if you're doing this by hand. And again, <laughs> this is a really big one. You can do far, far smaller ones and get the same effect. You can even do some very, very tiny ones. And I think I'll do some videos about some small tree designs at some point in the future. And then always build them elevated Elevated. At least that's what I think. I just think it looks nicer with these trees. You can see when I use this for the thumbnail, I put in some hills with world edit to put these in, but a small hill like this you could easily do in survival. And you can also put in some flowers, and I like keeping my colors matching, so I have some light pink stuff here to match with the color of the tree. So finally, I wanted to show you another interior, which is from this house. I had a tutorial on this, but it was really poor, so I think I'm going to make a new tutorial for this. At least let me know if you want me to. I thought it was a nice house, but I haven't put in the time yet. I'll try and get that out in the next couple months as I have a lot of new ideas for videos. But I just wanted to show you the interior for this house design to show you how you can apply these same kind of Japanese house characteristics to some smaller designs. It's more of a starter house. And so if you're coming in here, you can see we have the same kind of brick pushed out um, kitchen that we had on the same one. A lot smaller though, we have the smokers and stuff. Throughout here, this is a bit of a different design, but we have a small table with some carpets to sit on. And then I ended up using some scaffolding. This was copy and pasted in. Underneath, ideally, you'd have more wood like this that you wouldn't see grass underneath. But again, same carpeting. This was on the third floor, I believe, of the last house. And then some extra stuff, just including leaves around. You can see this has the same ceiling design, or at least similar with this coming across. You can see another screen here. This one has 
also the acacia trap doors. And you can see this is actually a really similar staircase to what we had on the first floor, the base of the bigger Japanese castle. But the difference is, is that instead of using iron bars underneath, there's upside down stairs coming through here. And then coming up here, we have a pretty simple second floor with a little kind of balcony with leaves. And then just some simple stuff here with some chests, a nice little bed. I think I'm going to build this in my next survival world as a starter house that we're starting up for the nether update. I haven't been on Minecraft for a while on survival at least, but that'll be fun. And so, yeah, you can see how these same kind of principles you can apply to a lot of different houses. A lot of what I'm doing here is actually really similar to the inside of the Japanese castle, just a lot more compact in terms of how we're building it. So finally, I thought I'd show you how you could apply these interior ideas into a much larger castle. So this is a far, far huger castle that I built earlier on, and I'll show you how you can kind of do a similar interior design with this bigger build. And so coming up here, you can see we have the same kind of ideas where we have these little guardian air, garden areas. They're built the same, sea lanterns underneath, throughout here, some little moves around. Then we have pools. This isn't quite... Um, size the same between just a pool being over here and just a garden being over here because we have more room but We have these little pools over here and we have the opportunity to build in these arches Which looks super cool and then building in some waterfalls coming and falling through them I really 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 love how these arches look and how the water comes down and we'll definitely use it in future builds And then a different stair design, but we have more room so this one can arch up a uh, more complicated ceiling design, but I'm not going to go over the specifics of that because this is not a castle that I have a tutorial on right now. I had one on this one a while ago, but it's not the greatest build. So you can see over here, this is the same second floor design just built into this room. You can see this is literally the same design. It's just built to fit this one. Then over here, same kitchen design right here. Uh, with a bit more room and then you can see the ceiling is the same we have some more leaves here just because there's more room to add it in and I built this on the mountain just because I love how these leaf colors look when you build these on the mountains leaf color on the mountains in my opinion is the best one I know some people won't agree with that we have some more room to kind of spice up the ceiling and over here and then more room to build in a more complete staircase between the floors and then on this final floor you can see this one is different than the other one, but it's really not that different. It's just that we had more room, so we we're able to build in these complete wall areas instead of just leaving them raw from what we had on the outside, but overall similar. More room for chests on this one, though. But yeah, you can see how you can take these same ideas and still apply them to the larger castle if you so choose. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Again, I'm very sorry to all of you for the long hiatus that I've been off, but we will be having a lot of new videos in the future, including a fantasy house design from the Underground Kingdom video that I shared a while back, and the Japanese house design that I showed earlier on in this video for the interior. Thank you all for watching again, and as always, stay classy, my friends.